change, an oil spill. Now we're facing record amounts of water. Just so we understand the challenge, it's not just the height of the water. Everybody's looking at the crest and saying, well, this water is going to be higher than it's been since maybe 1927 in a lot of parts of the state. It's also the volume and the duration of the water. We were talking to the folks from the Vicksburg, Vicksburg Corps, and they told us that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, they were telling us in some parts of our state, water levels aren't going to go back to normal until as late as June, maybe even July, compared to where it is going to be elevated. Now, the crest will last 7 to 10 days, but that high water is going to last could last longer than that. So it's not just the height of the water, it's the duration of that water and the volume of the water because the pressure that's going to put on our levees and the pressure that's going to put on our community. So it's important we understand we're in a marathon, not a sprint. It's not going to be done in a day or two. This one is going to take quite a bit of time. Now, we're here to share with you what, we, what, what we've been told, what we know, what we've been doing, and also to, to hear about from local officials about their preparations as well. As of now, we still haven't heard from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers uh, about whether or when they would operate the Morganza spillway. Uh, we have asked, I've talked to General uh, Walsh, I've asked, uh, based on General Landrino's recommendation, we've told them that ideally the state would like between three and five days notice once they make their decision to, before they open the spillway to give us time to move people, property out of harm's way. Uh, the General has told me, General Landrino has told me, look, even if they just give us three days, We'll get it done. We'll put more resources on it to get it done. But ideally, we would like three to five days. They haven't told us whether they're going to do it. They haven't told us when they would do it for preparation purposes. I've told our folks, let's act like they can decide as soon as Thursday. Not, They may not do that. They may do that. But I think it's better to be over-prepared rather than wait and then be surprised. As you may know, they opened up the Bonnie Carey spillway today. They've told us they're going to operate that at maximum capacity. It's going to take a little while to get it to that. If they were to open up the Morgans, and I say if, because they haven't told us they're going to do that. If they open it up, it would take them, they say, approximately three days. They would open it up slowly, and then once they open it up, it would probably be open and operate for at least uh, a couple of weeks. Well, let me tell you what we can do in, in the meantime, because it's important. We do everything we can to protect our people first and our property, uh, certainly second. We've mobilized the, the National Guard. There are up to 400 soldiers deployed, mobilized today, and the numbers are going to continue to go up. I've told the general. Use the, the soldiers, the resources that you need. There's no limit on that. So as, as they get additional missions, and I know they've got National Guard members with each of the parishes that are represented here today as well as several other parishes. I know here in Morgan City and in Amelia, we're working with the parish and local officials. I want to thank the other levy districts from across the state. I know they've moved something like, uh, I think it's approximately 13,000 feet of HESCO baskets here, and the guards are helping support local efforts to assemble uh, and put those baskets in place. And we really are in this together. You know, communities are sharing resources, sharing manpower, and that's the only way we're going to get it done. So I want to thank, I know all the levy districts are working together to share those resources. DOTD has ordered uh, additional HESCO baskets and, and barricades, and, and they continue to do that. I know they, uh, local officials have also got sandbag and, and other operations as well. A couple of notes, I want to thank our federal delegation. I want to thank uh, David and Jeff in particular. You may know that on Friday, we were turned down for 30, Title 32 activation. What that means is we asked the federal government to help with, with, when it comes to the National Guard mobilization. Right now, we're, it's a complete state mobilization. We got turned down on that request. We're appealing that request. To tell you just how ironic that is, the U.S. Army Corps has asked the National Guard to help provide aviation support, to fly them around, to inspect the levees, to move their equipment around, and we're happy to do it, and we're going to do it, whether we get Title 32 or not. But it just makes sense to me that the National Guard is playing such a critical role, we should, the administration up in D.C. should give us Title 32 approval. We also asked for a major presidential uh, declaration, a disaster declaration. We, we haven't got that. We're sending another official request today. Instead, what we got on Friday, so just so people understand, what they approved was we can ask the federal government for them to use their resources. But that doesn't mean that they're going to help local government or state government with our mobilization. That also doesn't mean that our people would be eligible under the Stafford Act for damages to their property, like we normally get during a hurricane event. So we're asking the president to do a full major disaster declaration. That would help our local governments. That would help our, our people as well. It would certainly help the state government. But we're not slowing down in the meantime. Even without that declaration, we're continuing to move forward. We're also asking the federal government, so you know, uh, I know that Garrett Shop has been working with the St. Mary uh, Levy District as well as local government and multiple parishes, not just St. Mary's Parish, because this is going to help multiple parishes with a project to sink the barge in, in Bayou Shane to help a lot of communities when it comes to backwater flooding. That's going to help folks from Lower St. Martin all the way down here. It's going to help multiple communities. 
We got this morning an oral approval of the permit. We're, the, I know we're all working together to give the technical uh, information to the Corps, and then we're going to push the Corps to do that as quickly as possible. Because under the declaration we got Friday, they've got to do it. So we're trying to get them to do that as quickly as possible. I do want to thank, again, David and Jeff. They've been working very hard to push the administration to, to reverse their decision on Title 32, to give us the full major declaration, to mobilize those resources. You've got local governments especially that are working around the clock and will be doing this for weeks that need as much help as they can get. So this can put a lot of pressure on some of the same governments, by the way, that had to respond to the oil spill and had to respond to these hurricanes before. So you're seeing a lot of pressure on the same folks again and again. But the bottom line is this. we got to do what it takes to protect our people. Now, whether or not help comes, we're going to do what it takes to protect our people, period. Now that, that is what we've got to do, and yet we're faced yet again with another major set of challenges. The American Red Cross assures us they've got over 60,000 shelter spaces in the parishes, either about to be impacted or next door to the parishes that are about to be impacted. So certainly if people have to evacuate, and I encourage people to listen to our local officials that they have to evacuate, there will be sufficient local capacity. We're not going to ask people to go hours away from their homes the way they often have to do in a hurricane. We know people are going to want to be close to their property, close to their homes to come back as quickly as possible. For people that don't have anywhere else to go, not only will we have shelter space, we'll have meals, we'll have the showers, we'll have the health care support, even transportation as well. But I want to emphasize, if people are self-sufficient, if they're able to evacuate themselves, they should do that. If they're able to evacuate their neighbors, they should do that as well. And people need to take notice that with the rising water, this could be a, a, an event that lasts for a little while. It's not like a hurricane where if, it's a, if the storm misses us, you go away for a couple of days and you come back. Some, some areas, not everybody, some areas could see high water for days and weeks. And so some people, and again, you'll know based on your communities, based on your neighborhoods, may ha have to make plans to be away for a little while. And again, you'd be much more comfortable with family and friends, but if people don't have anywhere else to go, the state's going to make sure that we provide those resources. And again, I want to thank the American Red Cross. We couldn't do this without them. And we couldn't do this without the church groups and the not-for-profits. We have asked for some special equipment, so you know. We made a request to the... Uh, we've made a request to the Coast Guard. They've got some equipment in Mobile. They've got some aerial equipment where they can go through flyover communities that have been evacuated with heat sensing equipment from the air. They can see if there are still people where they're not supposed to be. And that way, if there are, the sheriff, we can share that information with the sheriff's offices or others. They can go back and just make sure people know if there's been an evacuation in a particular area. And before I ask the local, I'm going to ask our federal officials to speak, and I'm going to ask our local officials to give us kind of just, uh, just again, a couple of representatives from each parish just to give us an update from each parish about the status of their preparations, where they are, and, and, and kind of what, what's ahead for the next several days.